Yeah, g'day. I'm Mark and welcome back to my lathe channel. My Shelblin lathe got a number three cam lock spindle nose. Quite a while ago, Andy Pugh in England cast up this chuck adapter so you can mount a chuck directly onto a milling machine. Quite a useful work holding device. Unfortunately, other than painting it, I haven't completed it. What it needs is a set of the cams that come in from the sides that grip on the pull studs to lock the chuck down. So this week's job is making three of those cams. Warning, tools get harmed. So let's take a look at one of those cams. So what do we got? Retaining washer-y thing, the cam itself, and there's a little detent plunger at the bottom with its spring. You can see the eccentricity. Over here it's almost touching the edge and down here not. The cutout which you align is for the cam pin to go in. We have some sort of retention feature and of course we need to drill a square hole. Now I'm surprised that Schaublin left these as rough as they did. Okay they are hardened. Schaublin's used this retaining ring up near the hex end whereas in the standard they're retained by a screw down the end. Whereas I'm going to be doing the ISO standard because then I'll just drill a hole up from the bottom, put a grub screw in it to retain it. I'm a little uncertain about my order of operations here. Do I start with my bar of stock, turn the diameter down to the 19 millimeters, offset it in the forge or chuck and turn the cam? But then I need these two features, this machined curve and also this flat across here. They need to be precisely located. In the norm, I think it's offset by 15 degrees. So if this here is the high point of the cam, you'd need to rotate it by 15 degrees, lock it and machine out this feature. And then yeah, 45 degrees to that alignment, mill this flat. How do I hold these and how do I locate them for that machining? As for material, when I bought this drop from the steel place, he didn't know what alloy it is, but since it's not magnetic, I'm going to guess it's an austenitic stainless and therefore can't be hardened. This is probably just an un unalloyed 1020, 1018, something like that. So what I might do is use this and then case harden the parts afterwards. For the indexer, I've got an oversized collet because three quarters is about 19.1 millimeters. So if I start off with my stock at 19.1, after heat treatment, I can still hard turn or grind the final diameter to get a nice finish. Holy moly, this is exactly the same mild steel bar turned on the bolly. Difference is pretty extreme. Mail time. Actually, this is a bit of a trick because this package arrived weeks ago. You might remember one of our great supporters of the channel down in Malta, Luke, made me a set of helical gears. Well, when I unboxed that, none of you eagle-eyed viewers noticed that in the back of the box, what's this? It's a rotary brooch. Luke made one for himself, and since he was in production mode, he decided to make an extra one and send it to me as well. What a guy. Big thumbs up for Luke. Everybody, just take a minute, go down in the comments section, give Luke some love. Thanks very much. More made with pride in Malta. So what's the special source with a rotary brooch? Because if you were just going to drive a form tool into a piece of work, it wouldn't cut, would it? So it's a tool, it's got a body, it's got some bearings in it to mount a rotating spindle. And it's designed for drilling odd shaped holes. The brooch is made with this rotating central shaft holding the tool. It's set at about a one degree angle to the axis of rotation, cocking the form tool off a bit at an angle. As this rotates, the tool gyrates. 
and it's that gyration of the cutting edges that does the cutting action. It's probably the most practical tool in the home shop for drilling hex holes for one-off screws, square holes in cam lock cams. You could even use it to make something like a Torx screw head hole. In the test live stream I did the other day, this is the cutting tool that I made. If you didn't see it, I'll leave a link above because it was pretty wild. I tried to do a three camera multi cam live stream while machining apart using three different machine tools and heat treatment. When I got to finally re watch the live stream a couple of days later, I nearly wet myself when the vice moved and I was rabbiting on about thinking the part had moved and in the comment sections everyone's screaming at me the vice moved the vice moved now in the heat of all that it, I'm not very good at keeping an eye on the comment section and I missed that a few very generous people donated some memberships to others so a big shout out to uh, Jim's videos Bill Brothers uh, Nipperix and EAVM I really do appreciate the, what you did there for me, guys. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, welcome to all the new members that you donated to. Thank you. Now, I made a couple of mistakes on it. And I think that I over-tempered it. It's probably softened enough that to be unusable. Rather than try and recover that one, I just started again and made another one. It's designed to cut a slightly oversized 7mm square. It's made of silver steel, hardened and just lightly tempered back. The last operation I need to do before I can use it is just put a little more of a dish in the end here. That gives you a little bit more primary relief and should make it cut better. So let's chuck this up on a collet. Is that colleting it up? Now to grind that dish form in the hardened cutter, about 20 years ago, I made this on the mini lathe. Right, I just need to lower that down a little bit. Oiling rag underneath there to catch the dust. The lathe into back gear for slow rotation. The stone wore down a fair bit, so the radius in there is probably a little more, more than it needs to be. Alright, a couple of licks on the whetstone and we should be about ready for a test cut. I just realised since we're retaining the tool with a grub screw, I'd better put a clamping flat on there. With great power comes great responsibility. And once you've got the ability to drill weird shaped holes, it's kind of hard to resist the temptation to switch out all of the Whitworth fasteners on the Clarkson with seven, <laughs> with seven point Allen key holes. Okay, this is a beautiful fit in this tool holder. There's almost no run out whatsoever. The bore in the housing to mount the bearings is offset about one degree from the center line. So if we look at this down on the shaft, we should see significant run out here at the root. But then as we move out, we should come to a, a like a focus point with very little run out. And then again, a creasing run out past that point. So I just need to find that focus point, it must be close. That focus point is where the cutting edges of the tool need to be placed. Just make a mark there. Yes, yeah, so it looks like cutting edges need to be mounted about 21, maybe 22 millimeters from that flange end. Right, I think it's about time just to do a test square cut. It's a 7mm hex, 
So I'll first clean out the middle with a 7mm drill. Okay, does my cutter work? It is starting to cut, but I think it's pushed the tool back. You can see from the mark that it uh, that the tool just moved. What Luke cleverly did was to put a set screw down in here so that I can set the right depth of the tool. That looks about right. Now with that depth stop set, this cutting bit shouldn't back down into the brooch anymore. Okay, I just took a quick look online and I see that my RPM is way off. I thought I should be cutting slowly, but of course, such a small diameter tool, it needs more like a thousand RPM. It's still just pushing it back in. It doesn't look like the tool's damaged. It's still got nice sharp cutting corners. I wonder if that center hole needs to be just a wee bit bigger. Right, that 7mm pilot hole is obviously too small for a 7.2mm brooch. This is just a reground mill which I got from Boeing Surplus about 20 years ago and it makes up at about 7.4, 7.5mm. I'll just open up that hole a little. That's a pretty good fit, huh? Alrighty, it works. The drill's probably a little bit too big. Bit of damage on the outside, so I should probably plan like a half a millimeter facing cut after doing the broaching. Looking down inside, the chips are really jammed in there very hard. Next time I'll clean them out with the milling cutter after doing the brooch. The 7.2 millimeters is a nice sloppy fit for the key. Just about what you want. Okay, I've now prepared three blanks. Probably should have done more because what's the chances of screwing one up? It's taken me a while. I've worked through on paper and I think I can get the job done in three setups. Well, a fourth later after heat treating. And I'm going to start by doing the center. So chuck this up and I've set it up so I've got plus three quarters of a millimeter to minus three quarters of a millimeter. And I've marked the high point because I'm going to need that on the next setup. So with that set up, Same feeds and speeds as before, same material, but mm, didn't work. So it looks like it smashed the tip off that insert. Let's take a closer look at it. Yep, that's a pretty unhappy looking insert. Hey, speaking of crashing things, if you want to keep your plane upright, you've got to make sure that the high lift devices come out symmetrically on both sides. And if you've been wondering how they ensure that symmetry, well, sure enough, it's just torque tubes. They run through the bottom of the fuselage from left to the right for both the slats and for the flaps. Okay, that tool holder's toast. The insert got pushed back. This little feature is supposed to be the backstop, but it's been munched. Change plan. Okay, seven microns oversize, I'll take that. 
Okay, so the next station is here at the milling machine, where I'll be using just a few lines of handwritten code. First I cut air to get the bugs out of the code, then I made a test cut on a scrap piece, before working out, wait a minute, I've got that mirrored. So I cut it again on the right side. Doesn't need any change in the code, it's just the, the way I set it up. Because the alignment's uh, important, the putt goes in with my marked low point, roughly at the top. To set the depth, I'll just use my angle here. Now I can just rotate that whole body of the indexer until the line lines up with the top. So the witness mark is now vertical, but we need it 15 degrees offset. When I was on number 75 squadron and we went on exercise to Australia, we saw that adjustable spanners were restricted to NCOs on their tool boards. So with it now aligned, it's in about that position. We just have to rotate it onto the other side. Goes to there for cutting the first part. You know, sometimes I really don't get it. The third part in series, I tighten it up just like the others, but this one gets ripped out of the collet. I don't get it. Definitely took that tooth off. All right, well that can go in the Clarkson's drawer of next grinds. Okay, so once again I've handwritten a program, cut a lot of air, done a test cut on my test piece here. With a bit of practice, a lot of practice, and plenty of concentration, I'm actually getting a bit faster at dialing things in with the four jaw chuck too. It looks like that time I didn't have the chuck tight enough because it hasn't gone all the way through. Right, I'll just clean out this wolf that's already in there with this end mill. Okay, I've gone through, I think the reason why it was initially not cutting properly is I didn't have enough RPM. I'd set it about 500 and it needs to be up more like a thousand for the brooch to work. That's what I found in practice.
it's moving in the chuck again. Wow, that looks horrible. Oh, okay. Yep, that's it. It's game over for that broaching bit. Have to make another one of them. But I don't have time for that today. So, man, this project is really breaking my balls. <laughs> Both last week with grinding up that tool bit and this week trying to make the cams, just nothing's going smoothly. I guess there's a reason why industry stopped using low alloy tool steels over a hundred years ago. I'm now out of time for this week. I'm really sorry about the unsatisfying video. <laughs> Rather an unsatisfying job. Hopefully next time I'll make better progress on something. See you later.